Welcome to this video series about networking. My name is Bruce Hartbents, a faculty member here at RIT, and I will be your host. To find out more, you can visit BruceHartbents.com or RIT.com. Thanks for listening, and thanks for watching. Welcome back, everybody, to another networking video. This is Bruce Hartbents, and we are going through the Packet Guide to Voice over IP. Right now, we're working through Chapter 2, which is traditional telephony, and this is Part 2 of that section. So without further ado, Part 2, Traditional Telephony. If you were following along last time, we were talking about the general topology, some of the organizations, and phone numbers in the public switch telephone network. Today we're going to zoom in and focus a little bit on that local loop tip and ring pair there. But remember that the local loop is just part of the larger architecture and it feeds into the whole thing. Now as a reminder, the telephone number is highly geographic. And so what we're going to talk about right now as we go over the local loop are phone numbers that have a lot in common. The area code and the office code. So all of these phones that are part of the local the local connection, or what we call the local loop, will all have those numbers as the same. The real big difference will be in the station code, which identifies that circuit. So we, here we have a layout, generally, of a local loop. A couple of features or details about the local loop it is analog. Now these are almost always small connections. If you have a larger business, it's not likely that you'll have a an analog line coming in, although it's possible that you might have several. So we're going to talk mostly about houses. And very typically, these start with two wire connections. Sometimes there's four. And these are the tip and ring wires. So the two wires are tip and ring. And this goes all the way back to the days of the little plug at the switchboard with Mabel there and identifies a part of the connector. So tip and ring are actually the green and red wires, and I always remember it as ring and red both begin with R. Now if you have another pair of connectors come in, that's usually a yellow and black pair. And the connectors used in almost all of these are going to be RJ11s. So we see the phone uh, all the way on the left, and that's our RJ11 terminated patch cord. But that goes usually down into your basement and then eventually winds up connected to the red and green wires going out of your house. And then these flow out into the network and then eventually wind up at the central office or the PBX, or private branch exchange. But the thing that we're going to try and figure out here is how does everybody in the neighborhood do the exact same thing? So if we expand this idea here a little bit, think about all of the houses in your neighborhood or all of the apartments in your building. All of them have analog lines going to them, and all of those tip and ring pairs flow out. And the first thing that they usually run into is something called an unpowered distribution frame. So if you've seen the closets in the basement of a building or in your friend's uh, yard, a lot of times there's this panel with all of these wires coming into it. These are just connections. Now this unpowered distribution frame usually feeds a larger cable, a 25 pair or 50 pair, sometimes as many as 800 pairs, leaving your neighborhood. Again, there's no power here. It's just one wire connected to another wire or a bunch of individual homes being connected out of a larger connection. Now, these eventually run into a power distribution frame, and that's usually your central office or what we call the class 5 switch. Now, distribution frames in buildings sometimes look like the two on the left here. We've got a Bixie block and a 66 block. These are also called punch-down blocks. So you have a punch-down tool. You take your tip and ring wires and actually pound them into these connectors. And, of course, on the right, we have our friends, the RJ45 and the RJ11. An interesting fun fact about the RJ11 is it fits right into the middle of an RJ45. Remember that RJ45 uh, has eight wires and the RJ11 has four. The tip and ring wires, that red and green pair, correspond to the blue pair on a network that's wired for data. So the blue pair, and this is why we see a lot of blue pair wires in telco closets, uh, they go to pair four and five. 
Well, if we look at this another way, here's all of our phones coming from the neighborhood. Note that they all have the same area code, they have the same prefix. Where they differ is in that station code. They're all aggregated together in that larger cable and then eventually wind up at that 5ES switch or class 5 switch. 5ESS is just one popular uh, chassis. Now, if we look end to end, there are a couple things that jump out at us. The local loops on either end of this, where the two telephones are, those are both analog. But in the middle, the PSTN is digital. So what we're taking is your analog voice, we convert it to digital, and then we reconvert it back to analog at the other end. Well, so how does all that happen? Well, what we've got to add to our diagram here is something called the subscriber line card and the codec. The codec is responsible for converting from analog to digital and back again. Now we're going to talk about codecs later on in another video, but for right now I'll just tell you that in the public switch telephone network, G.711 is the most popular codec. And G.711 uses a process called pulse code modulation to get this done. And again, we'll, we'll talk about how that works later on. So you make a phone call. It goes out your local loop, eventually winds up in your local exchange carrier or central office. The subscriber line card that your station is connected to converts your analog to digital using pulse code modulation. So the, the samples, the voice samples, are now in digital form, and they're transmitted across the network. And we're going to talk about T1s as the truck later on, until they eventually hit another class 5 switch, central office, PBX, and then that codec takes those digital samples and recreates the analog waveform and then so passes it down the analog local loop. And that's how it works from end to end. Now the individual details we'll cover uh, as we talk about codecs and G.711 in particular and uh, T cares, things like that. But that is your general overview of your local loops operation. Well, thanks very much for stopping by. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you listening. Uh, this was traditional telephony and chapter two in the Packet Guide to Voice over IP. Now, as you're perusing the site and checking out all the other things here, sometimes it can get a little overwhelming, but I want you to remember that you can do this. It's just networking after all. So it doesn't matter who you are, these are just some rules and some ideas. Get your head wrapped around them, and you can build something really cool. So, take a whack at it. Go build your own network. Thanks again for stopping by, and may your packets always reach their destinations.